Okay, so I've got some pink panther wafer biscuits and a cup of tea, so it felt like an appropriate juncture to watch a bit of 90s gaming television again. Bad Influence was on Monday, today is the Channel 4 game show which aired from 7th of January 1992 to the 10th of March 1992 in the first series. It is of course Games Master. Now this show used to air on Tuesdays at 6.30pm, so a bit later than Bad Influence, and they overlapped a bit in later series, but um, for this one, this came out at the start of the year, Bad Influence came out later in the year. Thank you! Thank you very much and welcome to Games Master, television's first ever video game magazine show. But when they overlapped it was amazing. Two doses of gaming greatness every week. Each week on the show, we'll be reviewing new games, giving away exclusive tips and cheats, and casting our eyes over the latest hardware and software development. And of course, this was the peak of the 16-bit era. We'll be devoted to our three special game-playing channels. Which is why we had so many programs like this. Dazzled your local arcade inhabitants with your hard-driving prowess, or simply enjoyed a waggle of your joystick in the privacy of your own bedroom, this is... Oh, Dominic, you comedian! He was actually a comedian, he's a Scottish comedian before this. ...to you, a man who you'll be seeing a lot more of in the next ten weeks, the ultimate computerised couch potato, the games master patrick moore so you'd like to pitch your skills against such a perfect master. pick for this program well, pack indeed. well i've decided to be gentle with you this being our first coming together and i've come for the decidedly cute super mario brothers 3. your assignment is to collect mario brothers 3. Now obviously the premise of this show is to pit competitors against each other in various games. There's also some review segments and the like. The first series was um, aired in a church setting, St Paul's Church in Dock Street, London. Better to get to grips with the fiendish gameplay of this deceptively cute game than our first contestant, Daniel Blake from Edgewell. The uh, series I'm most familiar with was the one in the oil rig, which was also used in a Red Dwarf episode, Justice, as the set. That was my favourite series, and that was uh, a series two, sorry, series two, and that uh, started to air on the 1st of October 1992, so that did overlap with Bad Influence, which was a glorious time. You practice the game a lot. Yes, quite a lot. So you're quite I just love watching these two programmes every week. Well, we'll all be rooting for you too, Daniel, because... I mean, Bad Influence was slightly my preferred one. See, we'll get ready to start the game. Thank you. But only because it had other segments on computing, it wasn't just gameplay against each other. Computer and Video Games magazine is world famous computing celebrity Julian Jazza Rigno. Julian, welcome again. We used to get various magazine editors in to do these bits. Like Dave Perry became a regular after series uh, two or three. Way to kick off the series. Right. And he was responsible for various magazines at the time. Very, very fast challenge. Daniel, are you ready? Then get collecting those coins. And he's off. So collected coins is the name of the game, Julian. He's not going to... Look at this. I mean, they're playing the... That's the Super Nintendo, aren't they? pick up the mushroom and convert himself. Is that the Super Nintendo version of Mario? I think it is. God! It kind of looks like the NES version. What he also needs to do is uh, pick up the leaf, which gives him... Is it the NES version? It is the NES version, isn't it? Oh my god, I can't tell the difference anymore. Well, there's the leaf, just as we spoke about it. Okay, 25 seconds gone, five... But this was not long after the SNES came out. Julian, no, what he needs to do is, uh, the raccoon suit gives him flying abilities, and what he needs to do is clear a run-up, and then, uh, be able to access higher parts mm. of the screen that you normally couldn't reach. Pink wafer biscuit, nice. He's gonna take a run-up and then, uh, fly up into the clouds. Oh my word, launches himself violently off that, and he's up and he's building up those coins, 12 coins, 45 seconds... Yeah, there's a lot of coins up here, basically he needs to rush along a bit. I don't know what he's doing, oh, passing around. Thing. This was definitely more for your um, gameplay aficionados. Time. You ought to be uh, collecting coins because there's a lot of game footage. Of course, there wasn't much other way of us getting game footage back then, other than watching programs like this. There was no internet. We could look at static pictures in magazines or watch these programs. Well, it's 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 trouble. Uh, he needs to access a power pill down here now and convert these blocks into coins. Uh, it still won't be enough, so the pressure's on him to actually get. So he's got to get how many coins has he got to get? A hundred. Oh, 
and okay. collect the coins that are in there. So. Right, he needs 60 more coins. He's got about oh, 35 seconds left. It's going to be very, very close, Jazzy. Yeah, he, he really needs to do this. this is he's going to get 100 coins in a minute. Now, he's in a little secret room here. He's going to get 50 coins in 25 seconds. He's got to come out of here and rush right as quickly as... Come on, mate. Come on. This is slow. I could do it quicker than this. Seconds to go. He's really got to run quickly to the right, and he could well make this challenge. He's just going to do it. There's nearly 10 seconds to go, and he's done it! So what, what did he have to do? I'm confused. What was the challenge? Maybe I shouldn't have been blabbing over that bit. This is Daniel. We said we wanted to start with a winner, and we certainly did. That seemed like no trouble at all to you, Daniel. Well done, Daniel. Any point at all where you thought, I'm not going to do this, and I'm going to be extremely embarrassed on live television? <laughs> it was uh, just um, getting the raccoon Mario, and then right at the end, I just wanted to make sure they wouldn't fall down any pits and hit anyone. Well, the thing is... Since you've completed the challenge, you're the first ever, <gasps> what we hope, is going to be a more prized possession than all the Oscars, Emmys, this is where it's at. Swap Top Eric's put together. You I'm not sure what I, what I wanted more, a Bad Influence t-shirt or a golden joystick. Oh my word. Dave Perry played the monk. In this version, apparently. You, and you can put it in your hand and walk proud and erect through the house. servant. Thank you very much, Daniel Blake. <laughs> Glorious. I think Larry Bundy Jr. has got a golden joystick. You lucky, lucky bastard. Challenge. Let's take a quick peek at this week's reviews. There we go. We get some reviews. Oh, Terminator. This week it's time to smear ketchup on your hot dog. The first one. The conversions. First off, on the Mega Drive, flex your pecs with postmodern icons. Such a good game. The Mega CD version, much better. Good game. It's very playable. Nice big sprites. Still good though. Lots of exciting explosions and gung ho action. There's a lot of uh, digitalized. Screenshots which are very impressive, and if you had any friends around, you could pose with it. For once, it's me, <laughs> you can pose with it. <laughs> Still got the great standard of graphics and sound that you come to expect from the Mega Drive, but it's also got man, your haircut is well ahead of its time 87%. Just something magical. This week's a late night movie, it's about just about games from this period, isn't there? It's just a different world. I mean, this used to be like my life. I used to spend about 80% of my time thinking about this. It's, uh, it's very addictive, but um, it doesn't really offer very much uh, original or new. The NES has a, a surfeit of good quality platforms. Still lots of NES titles up for review. It's DuckTales. So uh, I think uh, more really could have been done. It looks like a than just another box poor man's Dominic Diamond, doesn't it? NES platform game. <laughs> Look at that skeleton, good god! I need to do some reviews like this. I need to do reviews in the style of Games Master. Oh, yeah, uh, this is a, a scum engine game, isn't it? The uh, graphics and the depth of the story and the puzzling is all at a much uh, higher level. It's got all the makings of a Lucasfilm game, if you look at it. The, the attention to detail. Yes, it has. The graphics. Just the, the humorous touches and the sheer depth uh, are really quite stunning. That guy is not doing a lot to improve nerd culture. Point. I'd just say it looks like one of the uh, the best ever PC adventure games. 93%. Very gothic feel to this show. I do like a bit of gothicism. George Bush does it. Prince William started to do it. George Bush does it. And of course, we're not talking about George Bush Jr. We're talking about... The original George Bush, with a slightly higher IQ than his son. Game Boy owners are now customising their beloved handhelds. Oh my god, what the hell is that? <laughs> put the skateboard grips, put it on it, because it makes holding it much more comfortable. Yeah, man. Hands don't sweat so much. And I put the essential Stussy sticker on there. And the toy you have pimped your Game Boy. Toy and animation and colourful things. I was got those 3D squidgy stickers. I used to have them all over my desk. And it's just begging to be designed. It's crying out to be scribbled, drawn, smashed up and designed all over. This show was supposed to be far cooler than Bad Influence. It was hence why it was on in the evening. You can join our special... A slightly more adult aesthetic to it. How to join will be given at the... a slightly older viewer, maybe like... 16 or something like that, 15, 16. Now it's time for our celebrity challenge and we'll go over to Games Master to find out what it is. Nice to see you again. And you. I do hope you enjoyed my last little jaunt. Yes, I did. Competent player, wasn't he? Yes. For my second challenge this week, I thought... I love these little animations that go on around him. On Manchester United Europe. 
It'll be a game of two, 90 seconds. Manchester United and Europe. Manchester United formation. Well, Look at this, this was well before FIFA, wasn't it? When did FIFA come out? 94? ...display of exemplary gamesmanship. And our two contestants trying to get the ball in the net tonight are Simon Reynolds from Bishop Stortford and his opponent, Wimbledon and England striker, John Fashionu. Ah, you see, we used to get celebrities or minor celebrities on for some games. They even did entire celebrity versions of this show. Now, Simon, first of all, I see you're wearing a lovely Ipswich Town top. Are they? I think you've got all the supporters with you as well. Yeah. It's, um, is this your team or is it just a cruel joke? It is my team, yes. <laughs> well, my commiserations to you. What kind of tactics? So, are although Dominic Diamond presented uh, this series, awesome play tonight. Not a skill. it was uh, handed over to, what was his name, Dexter Fletcher, Fletcher Dexter in Series 3. It was a bit of a different uh, bag of fish, really. Enjoyable game and a good spirit. I think over the years, Wimbledon have built out the reputation of being fair and honest, and that's really just what we want to do. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> right, well, we'll see if that all comes through. If you'd like to take your seats, lads, and then we'll get ready to kick off. And joining me in my newly converted pulpit dugout tonight, from Software House Renegade, home of the Bitmap... Renegade! Bitmap Brothers! Amiga Powerhouse! What's the sort of basics? The Bitmap Brothers deserve a video. I do have intention to do a video on the Bitmap Brothers. Without that, about being able to control the ball with a player and move on and find another man. Okay then, are our two competitors ready? Okay then, John, kick off. Simon is in the white Liverpool. This was like sport, isn't it? This is the first sort of time when video games became a sport. I mean, we've got a sport in a sport here. That's going to be very important for this match. It's just, this programme should so be bought back there. It would be so good. I mean, it would, it would pick up a lot of viewers, especially if they played retro games. If they had a new game section and a retro section and aired it about the same time during the week. I reckon this would get so many viewers. Definitely needs to be done. It, Steve, I'm gonna have to speak to someone. I'm gonna have to try and contact the creators of this show. I can't. Who did it? I can't remember who made this show. Um, John suddenly coming in with some good. Hewland International. I mean, there was a gore special, isn't there? Wasn't there? There was a, there was a version with like Mortal Kombat and all the blood games. I'm not sure which series that was in. Possibly series two. Oh, John, here's the post. He's off the bench. Oh. Now, John, can you get up the pitch? Steve Byron chasing the legs of the Man United box. He shoots. Oh, got it. Oh, so close. Look at these replays. I think for me, my favourite football game of all time has possibly been FIFA. Oh, bro, I did really like World Cup Italia 90. I watched Kim Justice's review on World Cup Italia 90 recently. I don't know why I love that game. I don't know if it's for its cheesiness, because it was one of the first games I played. It's just... Oh, I, just, I love it. Part 2. That was a quick ad break. Hey, welcome back to Games Master Stadium. This is before the days of Sky Plus. Simon Reynolds has taken on Wimbledon's John Fashion. The score at the end of the final. We have some more biscuit. Several times, so it looks like we're in for a cracking second half. Okay, John Fashion, of course, playing classic Man United, playing from right to left in the famous red strip. John Toshak plays a nice ball back. John Toshak. Thompson sends it out to the right wing, but there's nobody there. Man United. Oh, Georgie Best picks it up, staying on his feet for once. John Fashion. <laughs> Nice dig at George Best there. God, he is excited, isn't he? He is the width of the pitch, an excellent passing, and I think Simon deserved that. Excellent stop by, there by the defender. Buckingham picks the ball up, takes it up the right flank, moves it towards the centre, looking for a player up front. Is he going to pass? No, he takes it himself, he's got the middle. He needs to pass, move that ball on. And there's a play. This, is, this, this was perfect dinner time viewing, wasn't it? You just got your tea, sat down on a tray, watched a bit of Games Master. Lovely job. It kind of provided a gap. It provided gaming while you were eating, and then when you finished eating, you could then go back to your gaming. Perfect viewing in the 90s. God, 1992, what a year. I didn't think I've ever played this game. 
And Steve Briscoe to the game. Steve Briscoe up up the middle. I was a big fan of FIFA. 95 on the PC. I think it may be getting to it. Just a question of pride for John now. Get, getting on the score sheet. Stevie Bruce running up the middle of the park. He's looking for a man in space. There's not one. He's got to dig himself. Although some football games are just, you know, football games, they're okay. Uh, they translate well onto computer, I think. Some sports games, ah, a bit ropey. Jimmy White's whirlwind snooker, if you can call snooker a sport, which I think you should. In this match. That's a terrific game, as was Steve Davis, snooker. I used to really like ice hockey as well, NHL hockey. That was a great Mega Drive game. I wonder how many golden joysticks they gave away. Second half, didn't you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. We did a lot of research into how Fash played, and uh, he played into our hands in the second half. You know, the lad's done great. Right. <laughs> now, John, you must be sick as a pilot. We well, obviously I'm a little bit disappointed. I think the crowd will bear with me. I think they thought it was a goal as well. <laughs> it was obviously a controversial decision. You Just know, like 1966 all over again. Exactly. Um, I don't bear many hard wishes, so, you know, all the best. I'm not a bad loser. OK, well, John's got every right to be unhappy because he's missed out on the chance of our fabulous Golden Throbbing Games Master Joystick. Throbbing Joystick. <laughs> I love it how he just slides in the adult references. So please, please. They're almost so discreet you don't notice them. The gallant loser, John I wonder if that joystick is actually usable. It's a quick shot, isn't it? It's a quick shot Python. I'd whip it out of the box and waggle it straight away. Each week at this juncture of the show, we enter our consultation zone. If you have any problems with your favourite... Look at your glasses, look at those rims. And we'll get you sparkly, Dominic. Who knows more than anyone, the Games Master. Ah, this is where people came in and asked for hints and cheats. It, with the virtual reality, look at the size of those helmets. Hello, Games Master. Look, <laughs> he's got bad posture. Stand up straight, mate. And what have you got to ask me? On Sonic the Hedgehog, I heard there's a secret world on Act 3 of the Green Hill. On Sonic the Hedgehog. Could you please tell me where it is. I can't find it anywhere. Can you tell me where it is? Indeed, I can, dear boy. Though I must admit to being a little surprised that you haven't found it yet. Work through the level. Oh, Games Master, you are. One arrogant bouncing over bastard. You can break straight through it in a I good way. Run up and spinning upon him. You will then be in a secret world where six city rings and an extra life await you. Thanks very much. See ya. I love that. The cheats, the cheats in this game, these early Hello, a nice um, can I do for you? episodes to seem so obvious now. Of course, they weren't at the time. Spell. Where is it? Elvara does indeed require a modicum well, of ingenuity. The I guess the some of them were actually. That was quite obvious. On the way towards the Falconer in the left. Oh, what's this? What game is this? All the ingredients you need for casting the propitious surprise spell. I like it. Oh, thanks. Uh, next, please. Hello, Games Master. On Simon's quest, I cannot get past Deborah Clip. I'm loving the nineties bomber what jacket. You give me. To get past the very large wall that is Deborah Cliff. You need to select the red crystal and then kneel down for about five mm. seconds. A whirlwind will then appear, which will whisk you up. Such simple pleasures. These are the days when cheats were used with codes rather than having to fucking pay for them on the App Store or buy add ons. So, some commercialised bullshit. It's this week. Now, for our final challenge, let's see what Games Master has planned. Yes. I thought an old-fashioned Wild West shootout would be a good way of ending the first show with a bang. The game, Mad Dog McCree. Mad Dog McCree! Escapade, you've been deputised, and your mission is to rid the town of outlaws... What a game! ...to deliver to freedom the town sheriff... One of the early FMV games on the Mega CD, also on the 3DO. See those battles blazing. I wonder which version they're playing. To play this game, our contestant needs a... Oh, the arcade version. ...but a quick trigger finger. We found him scouring the barren plains of North Wales, looking for action. We've roped him in and he's... Has anyone got one of those cabinets? How awesome would it be to have a Mad Dog McCree cabinet? Right. We should make... Tony. Like... Now, Tony... I a late night bar like this. With arcade cabinets. Gothic style, I'd, I'd go. Games player. 
Well, the kids don't get a look in these days. Who's that guy? I mean, a lot of people are going in there to use these machines as sort of... Who's he? And so I missed who he was. Who is he? Days work to unwind a bit. Okay, well, I've had a hard day myself. Let's hope you relieve my tension, Tony. If you'd like Tony? Tony? To the fighting range, yeah. we'll get ready to play. And helping me co-commentate from the sidewalk is the editor of Computer and Video Games magazine, See him. Tim Boone. VG. Games Master. Hi, Dominic. Now, Tim, this is a very special game. Do we have a special challenger there? Oh, I think so. Mad Dog McCree is sure, surely is a special game. It's a laser disc game in which the idea is to shoot as many of these mean varmints as you can. He asked if he had a good, a special challenger, not game. All the time, always ready for the unexpected. And I think in Tony, we could have a contender who knows his stuff. Okay, Tony, are you ready? Ready. Load your pistol and come He reminds me of Ned Flanders. <laughs> who is he? I should know who he is, surely. We need your help. Mad Dog McCree's gang is taking over the town. The mayor and his daughter have been taken hostage out to Mad Dog's hideout. The sheriff, he's locked up in jail. We're going to have to get him out to help with the gang. Can you help? Good. No. I said no. One more important Hey, thing. old codger! Don't tell me! Good shooting. This guy left his under ice with a blow to anyway. There's another one. Oh my god. Like, it's impressive how these games worked actually, because you have to have a time delay and then you have to flick to the sequence where he gets shot over. The keys to get the sheriff out of jail are with one eyed Jack. And he's in the saloon drinking. Although well, the premise is simple, the implementation is fairly tricky. Very far away. They're coming from all over the place. Uh, finish them off another couple of bullets here just to make sure. Yeah, now this place is full of trouble. Apart from her, she's quite safe. Be careful, that's Mad Dog's boys over there. Not bad acting, really. Looking at my keys, stranger? You wouldn't be trying to get the sheriff out of jail now, would you? Jocko! Why don't you try it, Sheriff? Oh my god. They say you used to be quicker than a toilet stop in Rout St. Country. <laughs> Oh, he's taking them down. What a badass! Oh, nice work, Tony. Brilliant shooting. Five out of five. Now back off to the jailhouse to rescue the sheriff. It's quite a nice big screen, isn't it? On that cabinet. There's plenty here. Tony's just wits about him right now. From anywhere. Shot him on the posterior there. I gotta get out of here. Why is the sheriff in jail? Yeah, save the sheriff. Nice work, Tony. Big round glasses was order of the day in the 90s. Was there any point in the game where you thought, this is a bit tricky? Well, it's never an easy, easy game, you know, it's always a bit difficult, but it was okay. Well, Tony, we've got very big news for you. To commemorate your famous shootout at the Games Master Corral, we'd like to award you our special coveted Golden Games Master Joystick. So many joysticks being given away. I wonder how they made them. They just sprayed them, didn't they? Gold paint. For Tony! I could make one myself. Why don't I just make one myself? I could sell them. My god, this is a business idea. But I have a feeling things are going to get a lot tougher. And now it's time for me to don my smoking jacket and have a refreshing cup of chamomile. So I'll see you again. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so there we go. That was Games Master Episode 1. I'm going to try and do these more frequently not twice a week this is just the first week i've done it so i thought i'd cover both the main shows of bad influence and games master there's some other shows as well which i may cover but thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next one Now for that information about the Games Master Club. We have newsletters, free t-shirts and competitions with staggering prizes. The Monk Hotline number to call is 0891 600 123. Calls are charged at 36 pence a minute after 6pm and 48 pence during the day. Lines are open around the clock.